In a perfect sim racing world, the multiplayer in each game would function seamlessly without any incidents whatsoever. However, in a more realistic one, this is nearly impossible as there will always be some black sheep trying to undermine the system and thereby annoying innocent players. And I think it's pretty safe to say that all of you watching already were involved in an incident where you were the person at fault. Even I can say for myself that I had one or two moments where I let my attention slip and made a mistake. But honestly, as long as you didn't pun someone intentionally off but made a genuine mistake, it's okay. I mean, we are all human after all. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that genuine mistakes can happen from time to time, but we should strive to minimize them. So in this video, I'm gonna go over 5 key situations that often lead to sad mistakes and how to avoid them, as well as present one additional bonus tip at the very end. The first point I wanna go over, more often than not, isn't your fault. The classic, I got punted by the person behind me, now Maria developed their own consciousness and has other ideas of where to go. Now, whether this is actually what happened, or you just lost it by yourself going over a bump, curb or whatever, doesn't really matter. What really counts is how you manage the imminent spin. Obviously, the best case scenario would be to catch the rear again and carry on as if nothing happened. But realistically speaking, in 90% of the cases, this won't happen. So what you want to do instead is to step on your brakes as hard as you can the moment you notice it's too late to stop the spin. The reasoning for this is to make yourself, or rather the movements of your car, more predictable for the other folks around you. Since if you just let the spin happen, your car might do a near 180 and then suddenly turn sharply to either side and roll back on track. However, if you lock your brakes, your car will do a 180 and then keep on sliding in a straight line. Let's look at a bad example of what not to do to make matters more clear. Here, the driver got touched from behind, lost control, but didn't lock his brakes, which ultimately means his car makes a sudden and unexpected movement back on track. If you would have applied said technique here, the car would still be sliding in a straight line until it safely grinds to a halt somewhere off track. The most important thing to take away from this is to learn when to acknowledge that you are no longer in control of your car and protect the other cars around you from any further incident. Next on the list is probably the shortest but most impactful tip, especially for newer players. You know how for every actual race in the real world, a formation lap takes place that gives all drivers the opportunity to bring some temperature into their tires and brakes? Well, as long as you are not doing a CP race or a race with custom settings, we usually don't have this luxury in ACC. I have way too often witnessed someone absolutely sending it in the first pre braking zone in say Spa for example, which would be at the end of the camera straight and obliterating at least two innocent drivers because he used his normal braking points. Not only are your brakes not up to temperature yet, but your tires also need at least one lap to get to acceptable grip levels. If you fully send it into any corner on the first lap, you're literally in double trouble. Luckily, to avoid this kind of situation is no wizardry. A general guideline I use is to quickly check the temperatures of my tires and brakes in the bottom right of the screen. And as long as the majority of my tires is bluish or my brakes are purple, I'm gonna brake a considerable amount of distance earlier and won't fully commit to any risky moves. Another inconvenience are the communication and awareness on track. And no, by communication I'm not talking about the built-in text chat. Before going into detail about it, let's take a quick peek at which controls on your wheel are important for the next part. First of all, try to find space for one button, used to flash your headlights and ideally two buttons for your left and right indicator. If there are not sufficient unbound buttons on your wheel, just binding one indicator should also work. Now to the actual communication part. In ACC, or rather in the racing series ACC simulates, blue flags function differently to more popular racing series like Formula 1 for example. In F1, it's mandatory for the car about to be lapped to let the approaching faster car pass within a set amount of blue flags shown by the track marshals. Contrary in ACC, this obligation doesn't exist. Here, it's the responsibility of the faster car to safely pass the slower car, which is not required to slow down or make space. Now, what could make this difficult to happen seamlessly are A, the low distance rearview mirrors and B, 
confusion or rather misunderstandings between both cars. So if you are the car about to be lapped, do not make any sudden movements, even if you have good intentions. If you want to make space, use your indicator, pull over to the side and then slow down. You want to pull over to the right side, engage the right indicator. You just want to slow down, indicate to the side of the track you are close to and do so. You don't want to make any efforts, then just keep going as usually, but expect the approaching car to overtake you in any of the next corners. Contrary, if you are the guy about to lap another car, make your intentions clear as soon as possible. Yes, the car in front technically gives you a free slipstream and you are allowed to use it. But please, for the love of God, don't drive up to the other guy's rear and then suddenly pull out of the slipstream and start your overtake. This just puts unnecessary stress onto your opponent and might suggest that you want to plow through on the racing line, which in turn could cause him to swerve away and right into your car as you leave the slipstream. Instead, try to already show your intentions when your gap is about 50 meters or so. Additionally, if the other car doesn't slow down and you intend to overtake them into an approaching corner, flash your headlights before the according braking zone. Now, after clearing up the most common misunderstandings occurring in a race, the same things can and should already be applied in qualifying sessions. There's nothing more frustrating than being two tenths down on your personal best, only to be blocked by an unaware car and losing all of your gains. So to avoid this situation, make sure to leave a gap of a few seconds to the next car in front of you, on track, before starting a hot lap. These gaps can be monitored by looking at the MFD, which is located at the bottom left of your screen. Similarly, if you are on an outlap, keep periodically monitoring the gaps on the MFD and evaluate whether a car on a hot lap is approaching or not and let them buy if that's the case. If your MFD isn't showing up in the bottom left or doesn't display the gaps to the other cars, head over to your settings, go to controls and bind the cycle MFD control to a button and cycle through it until the desired screen appears. Next, let's focus on overtaking, or rather when not to overtake. Without a doubt, you will inevitably get to a situation where you butcher your qualifying and have to start behind a few cars that are arguably much slower than you. Naturally, one wants to get past them as soon as possible, but this often leads to massive turn 1 incidents due to some unnecessary heroics, which in turn makes the race even worse. So instead of fully sending it into turn 1 or committing to a risky move around the outside or whatever, just wait for a safer opportunity which is mainly the starting or back straight on almost every track. In the end, it always takes both parties to more or less participate in a successful overtaking maneuver. No matter how skilled you are, if your opponent is overwhelmed by the move you are trying to pull off, it's gonna result in a collision regardless. So the easier the move, the higher the rate of its success and the more patient you are, the more successful your moves will be. Lastly, I'm gonna quickly go over a small bonus tip that doesn't necessarily have to do with mistake avoidance, but rather minimizing the consequences for other drivers and was already presented in my 5 tips for beginners in ACC video. If you bin it in a place where it's difficult to get out of or are stationary on track and unable to move because of severe damage or whatever, you can go back to the menus and select return to garage which will immediately remove your car from the track and place you in your garage. Essentially, your progress in the current lap won't count and the time it would take to tow you back to the pits is added to the time it takes to repair your car. So yeah, that's it from my side. If there are any things I didn't mention, but you feel like they are equally important, let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video or got something useful out of it, you could also consider subscribing to this channel for more sim racing content. And with that said, I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.